Welcome every life form at the Chaos Communication Camp 2015. Yeah. <laughs> we are so happy you found your way here to the western spiral arm of the galaxy to this relatively unimportant small beautiful place Ziegelei Park Milnberg. And I'm just as excited as you are, and I'm so much looking forward to meet my old friends, to meet new friends, to learn new stuff, to discover the campsite, and to drink one, two, or 23 chunks together with you. And I'm here since several days, I think since day minus four, and I already had the chance to see um, the impossible made possible by a group of incredibly dedicated volunteers that have brought us power, water, and the internet, a big applause for this group of volunteers that have brought us this camp. Big applause for the internet. Yes. And you weren't really going to clap for the power and the water, but when she said internet, you just went wild. <laughs> That's the spirit. Yeah, but save your energy for later. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, the thing is, with every camp, I mean, I've been on a couple of camps, and the camp, uh, the thing after the camp is always people ask, you know, why only every four years, right? I mean, if you have been before at the camp, you have this question before, and it's always like, yeah, it's in the summer, there's no Christmas, we don't have to go to family, we can't just all go and have a great time in the summer on the camp, right? Why only every four years? Can we just switch it around and make the Congress every four years, maybe? But... Um, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I would love that too, but the thing is, like Fiona just said, it is a lot of work. There have been volunteers uh, involved for a year, months and weeks on this campground to make all of this possible. And even like, you know, this tent was just built as we finished uh, preparing. Um, so if you find somebody from the Orga team around the campsite, uh, buy them a drink, uh, give them a smile, talk to them, and probably they will tell you why the camp is only happening every four years. So, and now, if you are here for the first time, of course, uh, you know, it's always the thing. I try to convince colleagues to come here and friends, yeah, you have to go, you have to go, and then they're like, yeah, okay, maybe I buy a ticket, then they don't. Then they see the pictures and hear my stories, and they're like, ah, uh, when is the next time? And I have to say, every four years. So everyone who made it here for the first time because they listened to a friend, they were convinced to come to this weird kind of hacker festival. Congratulations, uh, you made the right choice. Uh, we're happy you made it. Well, thanks for the warm welcome. <laughs> um, but the camp is never com complete, uh, especially not without you. You know, you saw just before you entered the tent that the tent was just finished. And the camp never stops to be built up. Even until the very last day, people will be there building up tents or installations, soldering some LEDs together to make some nice blinking lights, uh, assembling robots or uh, vehicles. Whatever it is, it always happens. And if you walk around the campsite and you have nothing to do, and you don't know what to do, and you see these people that still try to figure something out and make this camp even more awesome, just go there, don't ignore them, don't walk by, Go there and ask them if, you, if they need some help and make this camp even more awesome. Well, thanks for welcoming the people that are here for the very first time because um, it's kind of weird to do this opening for this camp because it's my first camp. I've never been to a camp before. Um, that's why I'm really, really honored to be standing here on stage. And, um, but the th in fact, uh, so, yeah, things escalated kind of quickly, but in fact, my first encounter with the CCC lies back several years. I was in 2010 when I first visited Congress for the very first time. And I'm pretty sure that every one of you who has ever been to a CCC event still has this first encounter as a very, very vivid memory. 
And I remember that day fairly well when I was back in Berlin, it was cold, it was in the BCC, and I only dared buying a day pass. And um, I remember when I entered the BCC, <laughs> when I entered the BCC, um, I entered basically into darkness. And I was totally overwhelmed by flashing, blinking colors and lights. I then barely escaped death at the drone area, which was still a big thing back then. And then I discovered the huge hack center, and I think I've never seen so many people on the computer at once in my entire life. And I had no idea what they are doing. Actually, still don't really know what they are doing, but I'm sure it's very, very clandestine and computation intensive. And then after that, I had to take a rest in the in the ball pit where I joined some nerds that were already sorting the balls according to their colors and took a deep breath and helped them. And since then, I've visited numerous CCC events and I've seen things. I've seen people sending a signal to the moon back and forth because they can. I've seen a pancake robot. I saw a stormtrooper on an escalator. I saw people partying hard on a water cannon. I saw an entire Congress being spilled from scratch just because thousands of volunteers wanted to contribute something. And in all those years, four years, there's this one feeling or this one thought that has re really never really left my mind. And that is, you might know it, some of you, this very particular thought. And that is, what the heck did I just see there? <laughs> what I... I don't even, I, what? <laughs> and this is something that I warmly invite every one of you, even those that are used to all crazy kinds of shit happening around them. Embrace that feeling. Take day one as a chance to wander the campsite and be basically like a puppy. Be amazed by everything that you see and devour all the impressions. I guarantee you, it is worth it. Now I really want to sort the balls in the ball pit too by color. I kind of like <laughs> um, Yeah, I mean, I definitely have also this what the heck feeling still. I mean, I'm in the CCC for about 15 years, I just realized. And I have another feeling that is also kind of strange because recently a colleague at the company asked me, where did I grow up? And I kind of out of reflex said in the Chaos Computer Club. <laughs> and. Um, my parents would disagree, I'm sure, but there is some truth to it because, you know, I spent there like 15 years and I came there because a friend took me there and I was back then a graphic designer with maybe above average interest in computers, but not really that, you know, far out. And I came there and I felt like a total alien because everybody was looking at their computers and I have weird discussions. But then after still continuing to go there, I realized everyone is an alien and being an alien is kind of the norm and we just live in a like happy society and exchange ideas right and everybody outside is kind of strange and his uniforms and ties and everything so um uh, that was really why i said i grew up there also um i mean now i'm a programmer and network stuff you know all these nerd topics uh uh, coming from the graphic design side and it's just because kind of I asked the hackers all these kinds of questions like how does this work and how does that work and often enough or maybe all the time I got like more answers than I could ever imagine in a kind of detail level that I could even process you know but after 15 years it kind of settled a little bit so now I'm good and it's kind of an honor also to be standing here because many of these people who taught me all these things in these 15 years are actually sitting in the audience here somewhere so it's quite touching to be actually opening this crazy event where you can all do all these kinds of things at once and that is something that I always tell people that are visiting Congress for the very first time never never hesitate to ask we are here to share our knowledge, and knowledge should be free and open and shared. So, confront people. Yeah. It's a given. So, confront people up front, go and ask them. And I guarantee you, you might find yourself in a nightly five hour discussion about how propane fueled camping fridges work that could happen to you. 
Yes, exactly. And one nice thing about this whole CCC uh, organization and uh, camp and congresses events is that hacking is not just about computers. I mean, if you already wandered around a campsite, if you wandered around a congress, you will see people with uh, doing guerrilla knitting, uh, people bake, uh, making pancake robotics. Okay, there is some computer involved, I admit it. <laughs> but, you know, there's like, a, it has a political dimension, a social dimension. Hacking is more a mindset than just like bits and bytes and everything, right? So, um, you know, one example for that would be uh, that people would you know, buy a furniture from Ikea and it comes with a manual and says like, okay, this is how you build your Billy bookshelf and then they build it and they're happy ever after. Where the hacker goes like, well, isn't that just the part, like some pieces of woods and can we not just combine them or maybe modify them, you know? Or you have this idea that you want to make a, a mousse au chocolat but the recipe says you need a mixer for that and you don't have a mixer. Some people in this world, they would actually go like, hmm, well, then I might not have a mousse au chocolat. Where the hacker mind said, you know, we go for this stuff. <laughs> This is just brilliant. I really love that one. And another thing that I really like, and this is really a thing for me, why I like the CCC and all these events, is even though the CCC has a kind of an agenda, you know, like privacy, also in a political field, a lot like this uh, fighting against voting machines, all these kind of very important things, we have that as an agenda, but it's not like this is a boot camp, join our revolution, we want you kind of deal. It's more like, you know, um, it's not necessarily about a revolution, but it could be. And this is the place where you could potentially find the right people to start a revolution. But if you don't, it's just as fine. And building a pancake robot as like your achievement from the camp is just as cool as the other one. And that's what I really like. It's, it's just this kind of, you know, very liberal feeling. And to further uh, illustrate the point that we have such a variety of topics, especially on the camp, is first of all, of course, the official program. I hope you checked that out all right, uh, already, because there is such a big variety of talks, many uh, lovely speakers, and it's, I think the slots are all like spaced out so you don't cook in this tent, I hope, right? <laughs> because I imagine it gets hot. Um, we have also something that is formally known as workshops. Now it's self-organized sessions. And it's workshops. Uh, but what it is, check out the wiki. It, there's a ton of really amazing workshops, self-organized. Um, we have also lightning talks happening. If you want to present your ideas, basically, uh, prepare some slides, look up on the wiki where to send them, put them there. Uh, because this camp is not only about learning stuff, it's also about getting your ideas out and maybe finding the right people that give you the final push to get your project or your idea on the right way. We have also, you know, like a little podcast studio where you could record your own podcast to tell it to the world. And I heard, I don't know if it's available actually for everybody, like this radio station and digital TV station. I mean, there's definitely plenty of stuff to uh, broadcast your ideas or tell the people about your ideas. And just to give you an example of like three of these self-organized sessions, I went through the list yesterday and three of them really caught my attention. There are many great others, but just to illustrate the point, it's not about computers only. First one, basic structure of matter, supergravitation gravitation unified theory. I have no idea what that is about. <laughs> Absolutely not, but I will check it out. <laughs> and maybe afterwards I will change my field of expertise. The, ne the next one, model rockets for kids. So there's one for adults as well, don't worry. Apparently, there's a workshop where you build model rockets with gunpowder and everything and you let them go. So I assume since it's for kids, they maybe have like the baby version or something, but you know, just to illustrate the point. And then lastly, for the connoisseurs of us, there is a workshop called Whiskey Leaks. <laughs> and uh, you know, if you're all done with the processing of information and you just want to sit and relax and you know, let, let your uh, CPU do the cycles to uh, uh, yeah, uh, digest everything, then you could go maybe there and bring your favorite bottle of whiskey if you happen to have uh, brought it and exchange it and take some leaks of whiskey. Yes. Okay, last thing that I want to say for now until Fiona gets the mic back uh, is 
that uh, since the last four years, um, I have the feeling that there is a lot, there's basically an explosion of all kinds of projects and groups that try to bring all kinds of people into IT. Of course, there's a big movement to bring women in IT, but there's many, many more. And um, the nice, yeah, absolutely. And what, what is really uh, heartwarming for me is uh, to see that since the last camp, all, the, all these kind of groups kind of made it to the camp as well, and they haven't been there, or not, I mean, not all of them have been last year. And just to see them here in the village also organizing workshops, also telling people about their ideas, their projects, is just really lovely. And I invite you all to also check out these groups that just kind of got started and tried to get something new going and maybe help them out. And there are, of course, further ways to contribute something to the, con uh, to the camp, um, and that is our tradition of the angels. Join the heavenly workforce, go to the heaven, register, and pick one of those many, many shifts that we have. Um, there have been so many angels already contributing the last days. Let's join the effort and contribute something, something as well. And actually, it's a never-ending tale of fun and breakfast. And it's probably the best way to onboard yourself to the camp. You can meet new cool people, you can meet very important people, you can be very important people, and you can find new friends, learn new stuff as well. You can choose a shift that you, and a thing that, you can, that you're particularly good in, but also things that you just want to learn. And I, strong, I strongly recommend every one of us to, be, to do at least one angel shift. And to further, you know, yeah, a bit less motivation and applause than for the internet, I see. But uh, there is, rumor has it that we're in the middle of an astronomical phenomenon. There's a meteor shower just above us. And also, it happened to be the case that uh, angels or the heaven looks for people for night shifts. So that means if you're the romantic kind of person, you know, and you want to contribute, you can take one of those night shifts, take your best friend or somebody who wants to be your best friend or somebody, you know, Future or just go friend. by your own, uh, by yourself, and then, you know, have a lovely night shift on the parking lot watching shooting stars together. <laughs> you know, it doesn't, you know, that sounds great, doesn't it? Come on. Do it, really, it's cool. And the, the thing is, I've been on the parking lot, on the official one, and it's super dark there. You know, here on the campsite, you won't see it. But yeah, I gotta go. <laughs> yeah, the, the sky is amazing at night. Um, speaking of beauty, who of you has your radio badge already? Show it! Woo! Oh, not that many yet. Woo. Yeah, I know. There will be another chance today to get your radio badge. The Munich CCC hackerspace has started to build it half a year ago and um, the last weeks and months basically the entire hackerspace turned into a radio batch assembling factory and they've been putting so much effort in it to produce more than five, uh, 4,000 radio batches for us and um, with uh, magic and social engineering they managed to make all the hardware components so cheap that every one of us can afford to have one. And I'm really, really fond of this idea because I, I guess maybe even a majority of us would have never in their entire life put hands on a software-defined um, radio and be, become an amateur radio operator. And in case you have no idea what that actually means, it's totally fine. <laughs> or me. There are plenty of resources to get started. Um, of course, there's a village of the Munich hackerspace that can support you, but since they have only limited resources, check out the wiki. When you have your badge, there's a link to the wiki in there, and you can uh, look up most of the information. And if you feel like there's something missing, just add it and um, help to fill up the wiki so that every question is being answered and we have a good documentation. And I'm really, really excited about all the projects that are going to come out of it, and particularly because they basically open up a huge playground that will um, open up a lot of possibilities on camp, but also after camp. There's a GitHub repository, and there are already some programs in it, and I'm sure there are more and more going to come after camp. So a huge, huge thank you to the Munich space for putting up the radio vetches. And, um, back one slide, and it's a bit.
It's funny, I talked to the people from the Munich Hackerspace yesterday and they told me that for this photo, you've probably seen it, they deliberately show the person with the biggest hands so that nobody would realize how big it actually is. <laughs> and it's kind of absurd as a necklace, but it's still really, really pretty. Okay, um, after like all this program, uh, official program and learning and teaching and helping and everything, there's also art and beauty because no CCC event would be a CCC event without the art and the beauty. So, as you already probably saw, there's uh, different, uh, you know, party floors, I would call it, uh, with bars, with food, with music, with light installations. You probably have seen this beautiful, if you have been already here last night, this beautiful little forest, birch forest with a disco ball in there. You know, there's a lot of uh, party happening in some of the villages, even there are small stages. Um, the Berlin village, for example, has a nice dome with projections, with DJ sets. Um, so check that out at night as well, uh, especially also all the beautiful light installations that we have. Um, there's a really special uh, a party tip for you now, if you don't know already. Apparently, uh, we have... Uh, you've seen these little trains running around, right? Apparently, some people decided to make a party train out of it. And not only it has a DJ, not only it has a bar, it apparently, to, according to rumors, it has a ball pit as well on the train. <laughs> So, you know, uh, last information I had, it's running every night, so be sure to catch one of those hilarious rides on this hilarious event. Um, the next kind of cultural program advice is the Ziegelei Park, like this whole area, because this was a facility to make bricks that helped to build basically Berlin up. So all the bricks of the houses came from here, because uh, it happens to ha be around a lot of lakes, right? We have, for example, the second clearest lake of Germany just next by. Uh, if you want to go swimming, uh, go out, take a car, take a bicycle, take some friends and really check out one of those many lakes around. But also these lakes had you know, clay and all the other things that you need to make bricks, so they started to do the brick factory here. And they have a museum. Uh, you might have seen the flyers on the campground. They uh, offer tours through the, to two kinds of museum. Um, and yeah, they also have a train ride that actually goes out of the campsite uh, to a separate location. There's timetables there uh, somewhere on these uh, bungalows out there. And also, apparently, according to those flyers, uh, every morning at 10 there's a regional food market outside of the camp. Did I read that correct? Can somebody confirm that? Raise your hand if you've seen that. Wow, okay. So, yeah, if you don't want to go to the supermarket and you don't want to eat your shitty wet cookies that you left outside the tent last night, maybe, you know, we just go to the regional food market and buy, uh, buy some vegetables. Um, yeah. Yay, vegetables. And I just couldn't resist to put a Principia Discordia slide in here uh, because now we have to talk... Yes. We have to talk about the order and the chaos. You know, outside of this uh, uh, area, the order is the dominant force, right? People wear ties, they walk weird, and they behave weird. In here, we definitely like, uh, make the balance more right. But we have to be careful to get the balance right. You know, if the chaos gets the dominant force, then it's also not really enjoyable as well. So that's what the whole sacred chow is about, right? If you don't know it, order and chaos in balance. So that means uh, we have to talk a little bit about all the things you shouldn't do or pay attention to. So, for example, uh, these train tracks, as I just mentioned, they're actually used for trains. So please don't put your bicycles, your tents, your cables, your water bottles or whatever you might else could put on train tracks. Uh, don't put them there because... Uh, Basically, uh, the train would have to stop every five meters to get the stuff away to continue the tour, and that would be bad for everybody. Also, make sure that you keep enough distance between tracks and your yeah, stuff. I know that, yeah, exactly. The, the, the camping space gets tight, but don't do it very close to the train tracks. Also, be careful about you know, where you put your cables. Don't put them over the pathways. Don't put your tent into escape routes. Um, uh, also, don't connect two different power grids together. First of all, don't operate your own power generator. Very, 
serious question, please don't do that. If you still haven't running, stop it now. And also don't connect two power grids by, for example, putting two machines in one rack and then powering them from two different grids or something. Because that could uh, fry your switch, fr could fry your equipment and potentially fry you and yeah. everybody else. Yeah, We don't want that. Also, a very important uh, thing, and that is really like one of the most important ones, is if you have your car parked next to the cash desk, like there's a green field on the opposite side of the cash desk, remove it as soon as this event ends, because otherwise the orga team will be really, really sad and maybe angry, and we don't want that, right? We want to make them happy, because that's an emergency area. I don't know what it's called in English, really. But please remove your cars. Uh, and pay attention to potential signs where you could park, could park your uh, car. And, you know, oops, uh, when in doubt, ask. Uh, we don't know everything, uh, you don't know everything, but there's somebody that knows something and that leads maybe to another person that knows more. And when in doubt, go to the info desk. That's really the best source, maybe if you cannot answer any questions. Uh, and when in doubt, when they're in doubt, they will actually call the right people to know the definite answer. So do that. And lastly, for this very boring and dry topic of organizational things, is water. Um, you hopefully realize we do have water for showers, wink, wink, <laughs> and uh, toilets and everything else. But it's a crazy infrastructural effort. Uh, I heard we use three times more water than all the village. Oh, no, we use more water than the three villages around this campground. And you know, it's it's quite an effort. This this area is not made for that amount of water consumption. So be really mindful when you take a shower, you wash your dishes and everything. You know, rather maybe go to a lake to do a swim and then shower just quickly instead of doing like a three-hour-long uh, shower while we are doing the opening event or something. Um, yeah, so that's really really important. And maybe just a little addition to that for the next camp. You realize we have these generators everywhere, right? Because the power grid is also not suitable for this kind of event, so we need them. And they're loud and they're annoying. And the organizers already said to me, or to, to us, it would be really nice if we could get a more self-sufficient camp in the next four years. So if, you know, we had this drone topic, everybody went crazy with drones, we mastered drones, we have octodrones, hexadrones, all the drones. Now, maybe for the next year, think about how we can get rid of those stupid uh, generators and how we can make maybe a self-sufficient camp. So, one of the last and probably advices that probably covers a lot of others is be excellent to each other. Be... Yes. Be respectful, be helpful, supportive at any given moment so that we can together make sure that anybody, everybody, no matter what their galactical background is, can enjoy CAM, music and technology just as we would like to. And also... That deserves applause. <laughs> and also, not only on CAM, be excellent here, but also consider or think about how you can take the spirit that you experience here back home to your everyday life and the things that you are doing. We are a couple thousand of people with very powerful knowledge and skills. Let's use them for something excellent. And I hope, and I hope that the camp will be a great source of inspiration for you and that you will be able to connect, to learn and to share ideas and strategies and how we can tackle the many, many challenges that are ahead of us, because there are still a lot of broken systems to fix. So... We're not done yet. As the last thing to say, I have the honor to once, of course, thank Ziegel Leipag Mildenberg for offering us their beautiful space. A big applause for that, because it's not a given that we can camp here.
And I think I can speak for myself, for Hoko, and every one of us by saying thank you so much, organizational team and volunteers, for making this camp possible for us and letting us have a great time here. Thank you so much. Yeah, and with that, there's only one more thing to say. You know, we hope you have an excellent adventure. We see you around the campsite. Enjoy and camp. Enjoy camp. Have a Thank great you. time. Thank you so much. A huge applause for Fiona and Huckel.